Hey guys, on this week's episode of First Frames First, things get a little weird. Adrian and I go and visit another podcast in our region. It's called the Finnish Parliament. Uh, we hang out in a sauna with some amazing folks. We go from sauna to polar bear swim. It's pretty hectic. Now, the video is brutal um, because we're basically sitting in the dark doing the podcast. But I hope you enjoy the show. It's a little bit different than usual. Uh, we had a great time. We hope you check out the Finnish Parliament um, a podcast, sauna podcast. Um, we're going to put uh, the link in the YouTube uh, description and on our website. Um, around 38 minutes or so, and right at the end, come back if you're paying attention to the video because um, you get to see Adrian and I dunk in the polar bear swim uh, in the freezing cold uh, pool. So. It's a little hectic. All right, we'll see you guys uh, in, in a couple weeks, and uh, we'll have some really cool news for you. Okay, bye-bye. Who are we? Nobodies. Speak for yourself. Okay. We're Canadian filmmakers with the dream of surviving financially on the backs of our films. Welcome to our show where we bring people along on our film journey. Maybe, maybe we can learn a thing or two. Maybe we can teach people a thing or two while drinking beers. I mean, if you can't drink beers while filmmaking, what's the point? We are Fable Forest Films, failing our way to success. Welcome to Jurassic Park. I mean, our show. First Frames First. Hello and welcome to this episode of First Frames First. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no hijacking. No, welcome to the barrel, guys. Pleasure the to have barrel. you. Barrel. Yeah. The barrel. That's cool. Finnish Parliament. Are we are going? inside an actual barrel. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We are. Um, a hot barrel. A very hot barrel. <laughs> we so learned, we've learned a little bit about you, but for the benefit of the listener, maybe you could just go around the horn and describe who you are, what you do. We'll start with you, Jay, here to my left. Hello, I'm Jason Green. Um, I'm a, a first-time listener, uh, first-time sauna -er, Uh so I'm pretty excited. You're a first-timer. I'm, 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 I'm ready to leave. You're already, about to lose your. You're losing your sauna virginity right yeah, now. It's, uh, Is it painful? It's a little. It's a little bit painful. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I have been to the sauna just for staring, like a second at just the gym. Stare into my eyes. This is. Uh, <laughs> an audio it's an audio <laughs> podcast so um yeah i uh i'm i'm part of the team at, at fable forest films uh producer feature uh, film producer and television producer and uh and uh manager at uh, blackberry for about 15 years so um a lot on the go super yeah, yeah uh, my name is adrian and i am primarily a stay-at-home dad and in the in the cracks between when I get a bit of time, then I do feature films and uh, make feature films and docu long form documentary series with Jay, the other side of Fable Forest Films, more the technical dude. Um, yeah, but that's about Super it. Super director, editor, foley artist, graphic, yes, graphic do, do it all, which is cool. But if you don't have money, then you got to do it yourself. Right. <laughs> Based out of Kitchener Waterloo. Yeah. Yeah. Fiercely local. Yeah, for sure. We, we, we push really hard to get local talent, and anyone that we're working with, we try really hard to keep it local. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So we're, we're really hoping to build a film community in the region. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going well. I mean, I would say that the film community is very vibrant and it's very happening, and it's actually, yeah, it's, it's coming, come a long way since we first started. So it's awesome. How did you guys get into film? What's the kind of origin of you guys starting to work together and developing your own passion for film? Was that something that you guys kind of came across independently and then found a shared interest together? Or yeah. what's the origin story on that? No, it was absolutely, it, it, it did develop separately. I just started, I went to university for film, always just wanted to make films. Mm. And um, then when I moved to Kitchener-Waterloo because I met my wife, there was no real large scale film industry. So where I used to be a camera technician on the, like the bigger sets and all of a sudden the bigger sets didn't exist. And I did one trip to Toronto to do a day call mm -hmm. and I got caught in traffic going there and I got caught in traffic going back <laughs> and I was like, I'm out. There is no <laughs> ways I can have, I can live this life. So I just moved into small video and at, by that stage I'd been writing a bunch of scripts. So I shot, I shot a movie and uh, I, at, right towards the end of that film I met Jay 
who was just, and he was just keen as a bean to get, get involved. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. Keen as a bean. <laughs> Here's the problem. As keen as if beans we can call. Be. Jason the Green Bean. <laughs> the thing is, right. is that there's a chance. It's going to stink? Yeah, and we don't want that. Okay. <laughs> green Bean. Yeah, that will make this guy grumpier. <laughs> if, so if just, I, I'd just like to say, so that for people that don't know, we're sitting in a dark barrel, mm. sweating. Mm -hmm. It's like, how hot is it in here? Jen, the temperature's next to you if you want to read that. Yeah, I can read it. Like, this is crazy. It is, yeah. uh, 85? Where are we at? Uh, it's not reading properly. See, oh. it's that error. Oh, it's that hot. Oh, we should ask. But it's probably Is this a PG podcast? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, good. Yeah, no. No, you can cuss. That's oh, okay. Yeah. Fire. I'm just saying. The fuck away. <laughs> <laughs> Permission granted. I've been, I've been behaving. I'm already dying, so it's good to know. Oh, I can't wait to see what comes out when we're 15 <laughs> minutes in. <laughs> uh, so so your, your passion for film, I mean, yeah. you kind of alluded to it, something you went to school yeah, for, yeah. but how about you, Jason? Yeah, so uh, for me, it was always just like um, uh, just a passion right from high school. So uh, for me, it was always, I want to write, I want to tell stories. I loved watching movies. I was... I was the person who saw every single thing ever in the theater. Um, so there was never a movie that came into the theater that I didn't drive into Ottawa to see because I grew up like in rural 40 minutes outside of a big city. Gotcha. So we would drive in twice a weekend to see whatever was coming out. Now I would well, argue you know, that you're still the same. You still go and see just about yeah. everything in the cinema. Not, I can't anymore. Uh, but I do. I do see a lot. And the, thing, <laughs> the thing is, I love the theater. The theater experience is the best. Is it, is and it um, I love, like, I do have a lot of, uh, you know, f movies in my house as well, but I still love going to theater. What is it about the theater experience that you love so much? Jen, you seem to bite onto that too. I, I don't know if I yeah, candidly share that sentiment. So I'm curious from your perspective. For me, what? it's the, I, it, to me, it's the immersion. So it's like, um, you know, you sit and you can fill your entire field of vision with mm. this thing that's, that's there. It's, mm. it's bigger than you can possibly imagine. And the sound, like when you're watching, um, I, you know, and luckily I found, uh, just jumping, uh, I found a wife who loves going to the movies as much as I do. And I don't think she did when she was growing up, but when we started dating, we started seeing everything and, and, um, you know, she tells a story about our first son, like punching and kicking because we went to see Lord of the Rings in the theater, and just the the soundtrack, uh, and uh, pumping through the speakers is not like anything that you can get in the house without waking up all your neighbors. So right, <laughs> and uh, you, there is something that I've noticed recently is that when you're in the cinema, there's zero distraction. Right, you because you, you do switch your phone off. Right. And, right. and now you are locked onto this thing for an hour and a half. Whereas when I'm at home, the way that I watch a movie now is I watch until I have to go and do something. And then I'm breaking that experience up into pieces. Right. Because right. then I'll come back to the movie. But the cinema really keeps it as a single unit. You're going to experience that movie from beginning to end 100%. Or, or like you just said about turning your phone off. I mean, how many of us watch a TV show or a movie, but we all sit down as a family in a, you know, you know, one person in a chair over here, a couple people on the couch over here, and if you're bored a little bit, you're flipping through your cell phone, looking at your, your Facebooks whilst you're watching the movie, but if you actually watched the movie, and you know, even if you thought you were bored for a second, you would maybe pick up other key pieces and things yeah. like that. So. Yeah, it even reminds me of our conversation with Scott about context and location mm. and how much that triggers like your home. That's why it's so hard to work from home, right? Is because there's just 8 million different contexts right. at home including the movie you're watching, right? Yeah. In the theater, it's like, it smells like popcorn. It's mm -hmm. the same smell that you've had since you were a child going mm -hmm. to the movie, right? There's just this feeling. There's a whole group of people laughing at the same. Totally. It's just yeah, like yeah, the yeah. context is different. The, even I even get amazed by like the, you know, the things at the beginning where it's just the literally like the logo for the yeah. person making, like the filmmaking studio. Right. But it's so good. Yeah. And you're like blown away. The movie hasn't even started, but just the sound they put with it and then it like explodes or something. And, and now you're ready. They're priming you yeah, for, for yeah, what's exactly. happening. Like, wow, I'm, I'm yeah. totally bought into this. So 
That now I will say that I did study papers at university which directly linked the movie going experience to being in the womb. Directly. The comfort of being in the room, womb in a dark, comfortable, soft hmm. sort of ah. environment that was the comfort of the womb and that the movie's like a dream environment. Anyway, these are, were smarter people than me that were writing about <laughs> this. So that's about the depth of that. So I <laughs> want well, to, I want to ask me any questions. I want to be back in the womb. Is that what you're, that's where I long to be. Well, just, <laughs> just to throw this out there, there's a new thing. So they just had the drug trading show in Toronto, which where, where people that own pharmacies will go and hover around and see what kind of products they want to put in their pharmacies that are not drug related. Mm. And one of the things that's doing very well are weighted blankets, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which yes. is like you get different weighted blankets, you put yeah. them on your body and then, and I, I would argue that that's like being in the womb. It's a duvet. It is like, yeah, that's the idea of it, right? It's yeah. that constant pressure, yes. diffuse pressure, like being mm. in water, it applies like a, a, it releases different hormones, right? Like uh -huh. oxytocin and some of the touch hormones that make you feel comfortable. I also connected. need wind and like a fan noise, so I assume that was also in the womb. <laughs> 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 not sure, but it's something I require while I sleep, so. Yeah. Maybe it's like the heartbeat in the womb, right? Has that, <sighs> white that noise. continuous white noise that, <laughs> yeah. uh, Totally. Yeah. Now, have you guys ever been into a sensory deprivation tank? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, done no, that a bunch actually. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Tell, tell me about that because I seem to be the only one that hasn't done this. Well, I think um, when I first had my opportunity to um, test drive those and, and really understand what it was about, <clears throat> that was a really early stage in my interest for meditation. Yeah. And what I really found was going into an environment where you truly are depleting majority of sensory input. <clears throat> there's no light, there's no sound, there's no touch except for that awkward moment when your pinky toe touches the side of the sensory deprivation tank 45 minutes into it and it wakes you up. But, yeah. Uh, and, the point and being sorry, is, in that moment, it's like you have a toe and like the little rim of water you can feel in your face. So it's like you've got like eyes and a toe, but you can't feel anything the else. rest of your body. It's really quite odd. It's like feeling something disconnected to you. Yeah, yeah. Like if Dave touched the wall and I could feel it, that's what it feels like when your toe touches the side. That is awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it just like, it really was and is for me the lazy man's way to meditate. Mm -hmm. You're just putting the odds in your favor of being able to get into an environment where you can actually achieve a sense of deep focus or for those interested in different brain frequencies, right? Yeah. You can get into different levels of, of <clears throat> the brain functioning that allows for that sense of connection or meditative state to be realized. And I think at the end of the day, it's kind of like playing with the signal to noise ratio <laughs> in some ways, right? Just to your own experience, which I think is kind of similar to the idea of a cinematic experience. Mm -hmm. It's like the sensory deprivation tank of consuming art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're in there, you're removing as, well, not all of them, but you're removing a significant amount of distraction, yeah. right? And so the signal to noise of being able to absorb that is significantly different. One of the neat things that I found really cool was in the sensory deprivation tank is listening to music. Yeah. Right, be able to put that in through underneath the water, whether it's Pink Floyd or others, you get really, really immersed within it. And I just think there's a different appreciation with for, the one sense for that. you're giving yourself, right? So it's, it's almost like if you were sitting in the cinema and, and you were able, the, the story itself was able, able to kind of pull you outside of your body. So you mm -hmm. stop feeling the fact that you were yeah. here, you were kind of in the movie. Yep. It would be like a guided meditation. Yeah, like a sensory deprivation tank controls your um, all of your senses. So yeah. it's kind of like a movie experience, right? That, that team has carefully crafted what you're going to experience with every one of your senses yes. almost, right? Mm -hmm. So that you're not making choices. You're yeah. just immersed in this experience that's been and controlled for you. I would, to I would say that a lot of filmmakers don't, probably don't think about things on that level when they're making a movie. They're like, okay, and this is where they hit her in the head. And blood, yes. Well, I would probably say equally, the person watching also doesn't Notice. necessarily put as much thought into yeah. themselves, fully relinquishing control yeah. to give themselves over to that art. Totally. So point being, in the context of sensory deprivation tank is, you can lie in there and not want to relax and have mind chatter going the entire time, move your arms around, mm -hmm. touch the walls. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. You do have to give yourself permission to give up. Yeah. Or yeah. to give in, right? Totally. Yeah. And I think... Same to the one who that is a patron inside of a cinematic experience. I don't know how many people consciously go to it for the same reasons that you do, Jay. Yeah. Right? When you're talking about, like, I go there, it's, it, it triggers my experience, I take it for what it is, I fully immerse myself in it. 
out of well, that many people. I'll, I'll, think it's I'll give you another <laughs> example too. But um, um, one thing that I found was because uh, I also like discomfort, and oh, mm-hmm. the, well, I, I've only yeah. done it once. Um, but for me, it was kind of uncomfortable. Like it was great, and I kind of got more into it. But there was a moment where. I think you have to, like, for a first-time person, I think they definitely got to warn you. I think they do, but, like... You're going to be sucked you're gonna, into the you're blackness. Gonna think a little bit of... There's going to be a little bit of panic, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I was lying in there and thought, the guy's going to come in and lock the door. Like, I'm never going to be able to get out. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and if, once you have that thought in your mind... It doesn't leave It's viral. totally cool, though, because what you do is you fight the feeling that you have to open the door to make sure that they haven't locked you in, right? right. And the longer you're in there... You're, you could be like, I'm sure he's locked it. I'm sure I'm in here forever. But you can just sit up and like push the thing. But it's, so, to fight that feeling is amazing. So Jason, will, he's, he's the type of person that would watch a scary movie and he's, urged, he's like, wants the movie to scare him as much as possible. Right. So he's like, you better do a good job and scare me. He's not like, oh my goodness. He's sort of, you know, being trepidatious of the fear. He's hoping that in the night he wakes up with cold sweats and he believes that his... <laughs> Totally. demonic being at the foot of his bed naked right. with a knife well like, that's a great point because on this podcast we like to dip into people's um, comfort zones how mm-hmm. they intentionally put themselves in difficult situations to better themselves as human beings sure. um, right now the difficult situation I'm feeling is I'm very warm Jen is right by the heater mm-hmm. I can't imagine how she feels I'm dying we should take a break yep. get cold come back and talk about that exact thing because that's super interesting right. oh no what are you it's called the old bear hug here I feel a little splash of that's, water on. is this that's just good. before we run out yes, yes. okay so, for those of you listening, this is basically torture. For those of us that are not used to this, they could probably use this in American military tactics to get information out of people. They're like, all right. I don't know why they're German. What do you think is worse, waterboarding or this? Oh, I've waterboarding. Never been, I've never been waterboarding, waterboarding 100%. Or cooked, all right. or cooked all right. slowly. All right, all right, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, my legs are... That is great. Oh yeah, feels so much better in here now. Yeah, but it's, it's like if, so. I just used to sauna at the gym when I was going regularly, and I just it was my favorite part of the gym. I hate I hate the gym. I hate the whole gym experience. I, if you love it, oh I don't. I hate it. I absolutely hate the gym experience. But my favorite part was absolutely the sauna. Mm. Did you bring water to me later? No. Yeah. Thank you. Are you coming over here now? Sure. Oh. Okay. That's nice. Oh, it's not as hot anymore. Always oh, the first one. Oh, God. Yeah, I'll do a little, uh, I'll just have a moment of silence here for the water. Oh. How can I still be cold right now? So, we just did a are, we, are we waiting? We're waiting a second. No, that's fine. Okay, moment of We peace. just did a polar bear swim. Oh. So, we just, we just went, left the sauna. And then we went and got into your very cold pool, mm-hmm. yeah. which was very shocking to our bodies. But <laughs> J- Jason was screaming like a little girl, and yeah. uh, we're gonna get that on video. Yeah, and and it was amazing. It felt really great. How are you guys feeling now? Yeah, awesome. Pretty good. So Jason, you were a bit reluctant to do the sauna before. You've yeah. now been through one cycle. How does it? Oh, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I'm, I'm still. I'm still freezing from the pool yeah. <laughs> and being outside, but uh, now I'm a big fan of being warm, uh, so uh, yeah, bring it on. Bring it it's on. the extremes, right, that make you, you like the hot more after the cold, cold more after the what? hot? Uh, no, the hot after the cold is much better than the cold after the hot. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some examples of some other extremes you fellows have been exploring over the last little bit? Well... Film related oh, or, otherwise. Oh, or otherwise. So otherwise, yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now we we were in the we were in the kitchen, and you guys just mentioned that you guys are into triathlons. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, so we tried a triathlon. Try. We a tried. Try, a, try? We tried a try a try. Now okay. and, and, and at Guelph, so you guys were there the second the second Guelph race. Yeah. So it it was a wonderful experience. But I will say that 
It's funny because you, when you asked me, you sent an email saying, think about you know places where you push your boundaries. Yeah. yeah. And I would say that you get you know super professional athletes who do this kind of thing all the time. And when they do a race, it is one thing. But when you are not used to doing a triathlon <laughs> or something of that nature, like some kind of race, right. and then you, then you embark on that, the you journey. are really pushing your boundaries because yeah. it's your first time that you're ever doing it. And I'll let Jay tell his story because he pushed his boundaries to the max at this, <laughs> at this little try-try. So the context here, what are the distances again for a try-try? It's a so 400-meter swim. Yeah. Uh, 10k bike, yeah, and a 2.5k jog. Okay, okay, yeah. great. Fine. 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 Tell us about your experience. So this is what two or three in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Is a starting time, right? Something like that. Was, was it a bit earlier? No, you're right. You're right. It was. It was like one or two in the afternoon. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So I think change the starting line. I'm trying yeah. to visualize. Yeah, no, yeah. totally. So we were we were really we were really nervous. So for, and they put us at the front with all the guys who were looking really aggressive, like they were going to go really fast. And we kind of just sort of slithered backwards <laughs> towards where all the old people were, and we felt comfortable. We were like, we'll just be here. Totally. They give you different color hats, like swimming hats, and uh, they were like, yeah, all the old people have the blue hat and I was like, perfect. I'm getting the blue hat, and I'm going to stay at the back of the bus. <laughs> I let everybody go first. But, um, yeah, I think it was, uh, like even the, just the training to, to, you know, get, get to it. So like I had never run a 5k in my entire life. And so, you know, trying the, the 10k bikes and seeing like, okay, I can do this. The plan wasn't to really like be fast. Just could <laughs> I even complete a 10k bicycle ride or whatever. So right. it was, it was about trying that stuff, but the swimming, I was the most worried about. And uh, so we tr we started swimming every week, and um, I got to the point where I thought I could I thought I could do it because we were swimming more laps than the 400 meter distance. Right. Yeah. distance. So I was like, and and you know I was reading all the like tips and stuff on the websites, and it was like, you know, you should go out and swim in the lake because it's not the same as the pool, and uh, <laughs> so I just swam more laps in the pool. But I think I don't know. I think we only swam in the pool. I don't know, I think I only swam in four or five times mm -hmm. and thought, you know, we'd be good to go. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, so we were there, we parked, the, they got a whole section where you park the bikes and you kind of like leave all your shoes and crap. Yeah, the transition zone. The transition zone. And uh, so we were just kind of waiting, you know, and watching everybody else, you know, they fire a gun or whatever they do and everybody, like a hundred people or 200 people, take off at a run and jump into the water together uh, off the beach and uh, all the bodies and all the people trying to swim and stuff it looked pretty hectic um, but yeah so we 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 went for it and uh yeah <laughs> Jay, so, so 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 you yeah you go you, you you swim out there's like a great big boy yeah or a great big yeah. like uh, inflatable and uh, then you, you hang a right and you, you go down to another boy and then you hang another right and then you come back into the beach. It's basically just a square. And so I took off, I swam, I got past the first boy and, uh, and, and there were people behind me, you know, so that was fine. But it was tiring. It was way more tiring than I thought. Like way, way more. I well, was you're tired. Well, Jack because it's a totally. race. Totally. Yeah, the right? adrenaline and, the whole and day. And people are hitting you and stuff and I wasn't yeah. ready for that. And, um, but I got, I got past the first boy and that was the first time I started to feel kind of tired. Like, you know, when you're, you know, when you're tired, when you're swimming, you can like maybe flip on your back and just go a little slower and you're, you're totally fine. Like in the pool, you can, it feels like you can go all day long, sort of, you can just kind of like mosey along and whatever, uh -huh. do your skull or whatever <laughs> you're doing. And, um, so I got, I was struggling by the time I got to the second boy and I turned around and I was on the home stretch to get back to the beach. And so I had probably gone, I don't 300 know, two, 300, yeah, yeah. yeah, 250 or 300 meters. And I started to get so tired that I just couldn't go any further after, uh, uh, just after the second boy. And so they told you like, if you're struggling and you need help to take your little toque off <laughs> and wave it, <laughs> wave it and they're, they're gonna come and get you. 
and because uh, they have this fun for you guys because you guys are such professional triathletes. You guys are like called it a swimming tube. You guys are like four hundred meters. What an idiot! So, so they got like little boats, uh, kayaks, kayaks, kayaks all over the place, and so. I was so tired, I couldn't even take my hat off. I was just, like, struggling to stay alive, basically. And so they're not coming to get you when you're just, like, floating. And so finally I got my hand in the air and I waved and I yelled. And the guy was, like, chit-chatting with his girlfriend or something. And uh, so he was like, okay, I'm going to mosey over. How are you doing? And finally I was able to grab onto this boat. And I was like, I don't think that I can make it in. He was like, just rest. You're going to be fine. You can rest for a while. And so I'm hanging onto this boat and there's a hole like in the heat that I was in, there were still tons of people behind me. So like, it wasn't like I was super slow. And so as I'm holding on to this... too hard out of the gates. Maybe. I, I don't <laughs> yeah. know. But like, as I'm holding onto this thing, I'm like, everyone else that is behind me has been swimming in the choppy water as long as I have been. And there are not drowning yet you know what I mean so they're still going hmm. and um, so then I felt I felt okay for a second I, I rested for like 30 seconds or a minute and I was like okay I'm like okay my I had calmed down and I was like I can I can go again thanks buddy and so I like let go and I started to go but my arms just were not working and I started <laughs> to like sink again I was like shit so I just come back I, I grabbed him. <laughs> he didn't go anywhere thank God <laughs> Uh, he was like, I'm not going to go anywhere. So I'm hanging on the boat again. And I'm like, don't leave me, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm holding on again. And, and I was just like, I don't think I can do this. And he was like, you can rest like 10, 15 minutes. I don't care. And um, so I did. I, I waited for quite a while. And I tried one more time. And I couldn't make my arms go. And I was like, damn it. So I had him row me in. And then, you know, you do the, like the walk of shame where they like bring you almost right into the thing and then the little judges are there and they're like, give us your little timer thing because you oh. failed. So I was oh. like, oh, yes. so then, then at that point you were long gone. Yeah. One hundred percent. I mean, yeah. I had no problem. J- Jason was like, he turned to me at the beginning. He was like, um, Adrian. Don't think that you have to hang back with me. I was like, oh, I wasn't going to do that. Was... <laughs> so, so I was thinking right then I was like so demoralized. And um, I was like, well, I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to go get my stuff, sit and I'll like grab a water and wait for him. And as I was kind of walking back up the, the incline or whatever, I was like, ah, I'll just keep going. Like, I don't, you know, I, they took my thing away, but I was like, I know when I started, I know I said I wanted to try to finish it in an hour and a half and I will do that. So I got on the bike and I was super pooped, but I kept going anyways. And so I did, I made the 10 K bike and I switched over and I did the jog and uh, I did finish it in an hour and 27 minutes, which seems still like a long time. That's awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I I didn't get an official uh, time, but I did cross the finish line. So yeah that was awesome so the thing is like i was just so surprised when jay said you know because i because th- i've wanted it's weird it's the like the one thing that like triathlons or something that i wanted to do before i did gymnastics and i did gymnastics for like my whole life and it was just something that i couldn't find access to where i lived in south africa i just couldn't find it but then this was my first one so i said to jay i was like i'm gonna do this little try try you know it's been a long time i've always wanted to do this and he was like yeah me too <laughs> what? Like, like I, I do sport like three, four times a week. I do sport <laughs> zero times a week. <laughs> so I was like, zero all right. But, but what got me thinking about this is when you sent me that email saying, what are the boundaries you push? Like boundaries are seriously different for different people. Oh, it's all relative. And, yeah. yeah, it's totally relative. And Jay pushed yeah. super, super hard on that That's day. Awesome. Yeah. Like, Beyond what? So I'm now I want to do another. He's like, I'm going to do four this year. I think I'm going to do one this year. Um, I <laughs> do will. Do, I will do the last one, and I will. And you will practice swimming in the lake before. I will. I'm. Yeah. I, I'm going to know that I can do it this time. Yeah. Um, so I. I mean, a. I. I. Because I. I. They did give me a medal. Oh. oh. Error. They gave me a error. Like, <laughs> they were like, here's your participation medal. 
And so I gave it to Adrian's daughter because I was like, I don't deserve this medal. Oh, so, you do. No, yeah. you do. You no, absolutely no, do. No, no, no. Well, so, I think but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to use gonna it for fuel it for the next one. Right. I think there's something really interesting about the ability to, well, to be blunt, fail, like to, to fail the swim, and then to keep going. Like, mm-hmm. A lot of, like, when we talk about pushing boundaries, the utopian idea of that is know where your boundary is exceed it just a little bit to push yourself yeah. mm-hmm. and then accomplish the outcome and feel better and then expand your comfort zone. In this case, and a lot of people, when they go past that threshold, it breaks them and they don't ever do it again. Yeah. You, it wasn't even like you got to a spot where it was like, ah, fuck, you know what? I didn't do this one. I'll come back next year. 2019 will be a different year. I'll try it again. Yeah. It literally took you no more than a 150 meter walk from the beach to the transition area. I can visualize exactly where you were. Yeah. And yeah. you said, screw it. I got an hour left. Right. I'm getting on the bike yeah, right yeah. now. And you already knew at that point in time that you weren't going to get your time, <laughs> right? Because you didn't have your chip. Right. You weren't a qualified participant. You weren't going to get a medal, although you did. Um, mm-hmm. Right? And mm-hmm. like, you still kept going. There's yeah. something really special about that. Where does that come from, from you? Where does that... Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I think that I, uh, I like to complete things, mm-hmm. you know? And... Um, it does drive me a little a little batty when you know I think I have my ups and downs too like uh, pretty frequently and I, I think I, that I know what my downs feel like and so um, you know if if we're working on something in the in the film world or if I'm working on something at work um, you know there's lots of times when you can have that kind of crushing feeling like you're never gonna get this done yeah. or you're 100 you should just give this up because there's no point. It's so much easier to go and do something else. Um, but you can have a lot of those and then never get anything done. And, you know, I want to push myself. I want to uh, uh, succeed and, and put stuff out in the world and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And you can, you're always going to have those demoralizing moments. So you got to try to just put them aside. And I think, you know, I don't think that I push most of the bad thoughts away as quickly. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah, I don't know where it comes from. Mm. Yeah. We had a business coach and she was busy analyzing all the things that we do. And one of the things that she locked onto, which is something like a unique selling proposition or just a unique thing about what we do in our business is just that we, we happen to finish the projects because (laughs) the projects are so expansive and so huge that, uh, the workload can often overwhelm people that are involved. So like, um, yeah, it's just like a one foot in front of the other, you, you know, you, you can't always be looking at the end goal, but maybe just the next scene you need to cut. Small, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's bite-sized, <laughs> bite-sized pieces yeah. and you just keep hacking away at it at sort yeah. of regular intervals. Yeah. It's hard to believe in yourself at, when you look at the end goal, but it's a yeah. lot easier to believe in yourself. Okay. I can edit this one. Yes. Right. I can make it to the bike. I can, I can drive down the street a couple minutes and see how I feel. Right. Exactly. And okay. I think your triathlon is a way better metaphor for how life actually is totally. than like the typical just keep training do the hard work put in the hard work and you accomplish the goal it's mm-hmm. it's a lot more like go balls out fail hard regroup well yeah, also yeah. the next thing also, right? I, had, like it's just, I had no it's, idea how ready i had to be so yeah you know <laughs> Yeah, I, I was not like, ready. I be was underprepared. Be overprepared. Totally. When do we actually get it right? Yeah. You know? You should pray and plan to fail a certain number of times in anything. We have a rule it's called the terrible ten where you just yeah. expect to be terrible the first ten times you do something. Yeah. That way if you if you nail it on time nine, you're like, Oh yeah. Winner you're winner. Getting, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is when a movie takes you two years to to make. Yeah. Three if you include the writing process. Mm-hmm. 10 movies, it's 30 years of your life. So. Unac- unacceptable. Learn <laughs> faster. <laughs> so Tim, you're in the creative space too. Sure. Jason, you mentioned like the feeling of knowing what it feels like when you're down. Totally. Right? When you're in that trough of despair, mm. things are dark, you don't feel like there's a crack of light, right? Yeah. Um, how does that show up for you, Tim? Because... I know that, you know you haven't necessarily tried a triathlon yet. No, not yet. I'm, uh, I'm doing that too. Yeah. One day. Well, a marathon to start okay. in October, right. so right. we'll get there. Baby steps. Um, but what does that feel like for you? How do you know when Tim is in that pocket of shit, for lack of better words? <laughs> I think you just feel it in your bones. You feel it like throughout your entire body. 
But where, where, where specifically not, in your body? Because emotions show up in different spots. I'd say it's right. I'm pointing to the area between my, my throat and my heart. Hmm. That's where it, it gets tight. There's a tightness hmm. there. Uncomfortableness to Anxiousness. it. Anxiousness? Anxious. I would call it. I don't think I suffer from anxiety, but maybe that is a form of anxiety. Um, yeah. yeah and, and I think to further relate it, like it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done, right? So regardless of whether you hang off the kayak for 10, 15 minutes, as long as you got that project done, that edit done, that marathon, try, yeah. try, try done. Especially if that's your goal that you set out to in the beginning. Exactly. Because when you, when you, at the beginning, you can be like, I just want to finish. Right. Mm-hmm. But then when you get going, you're like, well, I want the Oscar. And yeah. you're like, well, that wasn't the goal when we, when we started out, right? The goal <laughs> was just to finish. So just remember that. I had somebody share a really interesting idea that I think I learned it in the context of triathlon and timing for goals as far as like completing it and then setting time goals but I think it's it's translatable to other things it was you know last year when we were doing our first event like you mine was finish the damn thing yeah finish it time is relevant but then all of a sudden, once you start training, you're saying to yourself, kind of like the Oscar idea, mm-hmm. and you're two years into the film, like, shit, this is good. Like, we should get an Oscar for this, right? Yeah. Um, so all of a sudden, you start building and anticipating bigger goals, or you, you feel more confident. That's why you yeah. push the original one. So the idea of saying, my bronze medal gold is finishing. My silver medal gold uh, is doing it in less than two hours. My gold medal is less than an hour and 30 minutes all through sports. With a medal around your neck. Yeah. yeah. And like yeah. setting tiered goals where you can still kind of win no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Right? Or not no matter cool. what, but you, you don't lose sight of your original goal, but a you potential, can create stretch goals. A potential Oscar, that's what you're saying. That's right, yeah. that's right. Nomination. Potential Oscar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's hard when that happens too, though, because it can take away from the win that you thought you were going to get mm-hmm. right like completing it or if i think about you doing your race day like doing it in under six hours all of a sudden that sort of arbitrary line pops up and then if it doesn't happen mm-hmm. you're happy and you're also like oh, that one you know could have yeah. been better could have been better and maybe that's not a bad thing maybe that's what pushes us as humans to get better but i don't know maybe. i need to go into the pool okay. Are you hot, Adrian? i'm just cooking Really? I'll switch places. Well, here, why don't we put some water on here? <laughs> just, just stay put for a second. For three. I like that after the experience of going into the pool the first time, you're like, yeah, I, don't, I totally want to do that again. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that but the thing is, I'll be honest, like when we got out of the pool, when we got out of the pool, yeah. I, didn't make, I never got cold until we were back in the sauna. I never felt the cool. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was warm and comfortable the entire time. I was just cold in the pool. How's that effect? Yeah. I like how you add a little bit of holy fur tree water to the, uh, you spritzed right. it up that time. Cleanse the system. <sighs> okay, so we'll be back after these more. messages. Okay, grab the GoPro. Yeah. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah, oh, for fur tree deliciousness. Yeah. Oh, it's not. Okay. I'm hoping. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, should be fine. Should be fine. For yeah, it's got it's got one bar. Let me just get ahead of you guys. Oh. Good catch. Thank you. I hope you got that on, on the camera. I got some of it. Oh. Yeah, it's been to me, Adrian. <gasps> oh yeah, man. That's gentle. It's gentle on my nipples. So do you guys do any other sport besides triathleting? Triathleting? Yeah. I like sports. Yeah. We All the sports? We go to a gym that does like crossfit kind of... Oh, practice. cool. That's our main go-to so, exercise. So have you, so guys, seen, have you guys seen the documentaries, the crossfit documentaries on Netflix? Yeah. <sighs> They're Man. amazing. I didn't, I didn't yeah. realize that crossfit was such a sport. Well, it's the sport of fitness, which is interesting. Yeah. It is, it, it, like it, and I've never seen fitter people in my whole life. Yeah, they're yeah. insane. Those crossfitters. They're next level. Is it, is it, is it, is it, it uh, oh, stuff. oh, it's, it's, uh, oh, falling, falling down. Is it, is it running, Tim? It is, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, they are unbelievable. Yeah, I, uh, when I saw that, I was just, my mind was blown. And we, I actually have a friend who's doing strongman stuff now, which is, uh, I suppose, Anyway, it's just he's got a super gym in his, and he is just getting so huge. You, so I feel like for that sport, strongman, you need to have an abnormally large 
bone structure. Yeah. Like you, like you. It's hard. You're either like born, you can do that, or like I don't know. There's a when, yeah. Yes. I totally. will say that Neil was a lot smaller. Yes, he was a normal. He, he was a no, but he was a bit thicker. Like Dave has a sort of a slender, slender look. You know, a slender body. Whereas like Neil, he, Dave. Adrian's been no. noticing your slender body. No, but like, <laughs> no, <laughs> Thanks, buddy. no. Listen, the, the, the thing is that you no, have there, there's one hundred percent body types that that are that are geared towards certain sports. And yeah, actually, I was very frustrated because when I realized this, I spent like I, I mentioned earlier that I spent a large portion of my child life doing gymnastics, and I absolutely have the wrong body type for gymnastics. My thighs are far too big. I had my leg. If you saw if you saw a gymnast in real life. They have huge upper bodies and small legs. Okay. And I spent a large portion of time doing gymnastics with legs that were too big and heavy. Hmm. What sport uh, should I have done? Should I do with my body type? If you were golf, right? No, you <laughs> could. You could totally. I don't know. Actually, you. You. I don't know. Poker. <laughs> <laughs> Billiards? <laughs> Billiards. Darts. 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 240. <laughs> I think he could be a good lifter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just want to say. Are really strong. I did want to say, uh, can uh, um, because we're going to steal the audio, we're going to put the, is it okay if we use yeah, this yeah. as one of, of our podcasts too? Yeah. Because we have to keep creating stuff all the time as well. So can you guys, just for the sake of our audience... Yeah. Uh, so we do we do a show every we post a show every second Wednesday called First Frames First, uh, which really just documents the journey of filmmaking that we're on, mm-hmm. and we kind of fill people in with what we're doing all the time. And uh, this uh, has nothing to do with film today, maybe a little bit, but uh, we also like to throw on shows where we're doing something kind of different and fun as well. Yeah. But can you guys tell us tell us the name of your show? Um, which will be redundant for your audience and tell us a little bit about what you guys do Yeah, sure. So our show is called the Finnish Parliament the idea is um, You know, well, there's, there's a rumor if you will that in Finland in the Parliament They have a sauna and the sauna is used to be able to have difficult conversations mm-hmm. Right, it's difficult to lie. You can't lie when you're in a sauna, <laughs> close it's to being naked, right? It's a more stripped right? down environment. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally. And so for us, um, one of the things that we've loved doing here at our place is something called Polar Retreat. We've done that for the last two years or so. And that's where we have people that just share the values of self-care and self-growth and just community come together to enjoy sauna, great food, great community, and just creating and using that space with themselves. And we would always have these types of conversations Mm -hmm. unrecorded in the barrel. Mm -hmm. And so the finished part of it, we just thought, well, what a neat way just to be able to bring people in more intentionally to have those types of conversations. So Mm -hmm. um, one of the principles that we love to talk about in the Finnish parliament is this idea of polarities. And our retreat being the polar retreat, it's not that because the water is really cold, albeit that's the truth. Um, It's because this idea of polarity is gracefully navigating the extremes of life. Right. Mm -hmm. And that a life well lived is both one that is intensive on the performance side, whether that's doing film, whether that's sport, whether that's parenting, right, whatever that extreme is on output. And then making sure there's an intentional practice on the recovery side. So nurturing passion, nurturing health, nurturing connection and meaningful relationships, whatever builds energy back in. And so our retreats are all designed to be able to do that. But that's where in these conversations in the barrel, we often talk about the polarities and what will people do on, uh, on the performance side. But often what we don't talk about off, you know, enough is what do we do on the nurturing side? Mm-hmm. So that's a bit of context for you. What we get to. Tim, Jen, you want to? I was going to say the other thing um, that I wanted to add was the idea of, <clears throat> you know, the sauna and the cold kind of pushes the boundaries of normal exposure to temperatures. And that, so that's the other piece of it, right, is, is intentionally putting yourself in situations that elbow out your comfort zone so that it doesn't shrink around you as you continue on your life's journey that you're actually expanding as a person, right? Mm-hmm. And so... 
Um, a lot of the people who do cold immersion, for example, talk about our circulatory systems and how weak they are now because we never, you know, we go outside and we bundle up and then we come inside and to our perfectly temperatured right. house and we... With our weighted blankets. So we never yes. really allow ourselves to be exposed mm -hmm. to the uncomfortable ends of the temperature spectrum or any spectrum for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. We try to stay as comfortable as possible um, instead of purposely doing a triathlon that you barely train for because it, because it hurts, because it's hard, because it pushes your mind and your body. Now, yeah. just it also, uh, how long have you guys been doing the show? The show? Gosh, Tim, eight, nine episodes? Yeah. So, cool. yeah. It's Very new. cool. Not too long. Yeah, yeah still pretty green. Baby. Mm -hmm. so, so this is great because if people from our show want to listen, then they should just start at the beginning. And watch them all. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Amazing. I mean, they're good fun. I do, I do have a theory with regards to sport, and you, you talk about finding discomfort. I think it's essential in in having a healthy life. You have to get your heart rate up. You have to burn. You have to burn the fa the factory has to burn hot. <laughs> For those of you listening, I wish you could see Adrian's hands. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> the fact. <laughs> But you gotta you gotta get the factory to burn hot because then it spits all the bad things out. Now this is very rudimentary from where the levels that you guys probably think about things. <laughs> but I just think that you gotta it's it's like that's Let me tell you, you when the film factory is running hot, that's the best time also. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go, when go. When you're moving, moving, moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need that energy. There is certainly I think what you're saying, Jason, is it, it doesn't necessarily need to be just the physical engine it can be a mental engine too totally right it's like just stimulating that and pushing that i will say though that from a sport perspective or the physiological benefits and experience of actually bringing your heart rate up mm -hmm. i've had some of the most wicked wicked highs mm -hmm. after exercise <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. right? and that's probably why you love it so much and why you carry on doing it is Absolutely, but like I, I've openly shared with my closest friends, and not so much spoken about it publicly, but like I've struggled with drug use or alcohol, like many of us growing up in our adolescence, right, or, or early adulthood, and trying to get through that or over that, and it was until I really got into sport intensely, mm -hmm. where I was like, holy shit, this beats any case of beer or <laughs> any joint tenfold, mm -hmm. you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. And um, I think there's certainly something really special that any human can experience by doing that. And you've, ha you've had an interesting fitness journey over the last few years from a place of, you know, really not taking care of your body in that way or doing any of that to now training for a full Ironman. This in is the awesome. course of a couple of years. Unbelievable. Like it's a Congratulations. Really, this is a big deal. What, what is an Ironman? Like it run that through, run us through that. So an Ironman, um, it's regarded as the most difficult single sport, single day sporting event in the world. It's four kilometer swim with a 180 kilometer bike ride and then a full marathon after that. So yeah. it's going to take me probably around 12 hours, I bet, to do it. That's kind of the, the, the level that I'm looking at trying to push towards, but they give you 17 to complete it. Holy wow! Shit. Yeah, it's a long, uh, it's a long journey, yeah. for sure. That is incredible. When, when is this? When are you? Do you have a race in mind? Oh yeah, I've already long? signed up. The, the clock's been taken since November, and doing it in uh, in Whistler end of July. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah, so it'll be good fun. And last year was the first time I've ever, I'd ever done a triathlon. Only um, yeah, just just one or two. So when you find something, you like to kick the shit out of it. You like. Well, well, last year was the first time you did a triathlon. You're like. I like this. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Absolutely, and I think to Jen's point around my journey with sport, like something that may not necessarily be so obvious is part of why I left sport for so many years. Like I grew up as an avid athlete. To your point of like wanting to kick the shit out of things, mm -hmm. hockey, volleyball, whatever it was, I loved competing. I loved winning, mm -hmm. um, and going full at something. Well, and that's since translated into business and other things. But with sport, I gave up sport for probably 10 or 12 years after I broke my neck and my back playing hockey. And I had a pretty traumatic experience with that. It's been particularly with a family member who wasn't really there for me during that time um, and really struggled with that. I'm not sure what it was, but it was like you a trauma were... associated with that where I just stopped doing sport. Right. And it was this like painful process of like, I was very, Jen, you can attest to this. I was adamant, like Jen would invite me to the gym, going to go for runs. And I was like, not a fucking chance. 
I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. And it was hard to get back into it. But all of a sudden, once I started to see some momentum and some gains, that shit kicking mindset started to get back in where I was like, oh, all right, watch out, I'm coming back fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. there was a, a tenacious hunger that kind of stirred about. The same love you had for business and like developing people's ideas innovatively within their like organizations. Yeah. I saw that come through in your sport and it just, totally. yeah, it lit and up in you. I, I firmly believe that in not trying to change other people, especially in a relationship, like I, I like to go in, you do you, I'll do me if it's a good fit, that's great. Except the one thing that I've ever tried to convince you to do, I think, is go to the gym. It took me like a year to get him there. <laughs> and I was like, I just feel it, that something like inside you needs this again. Mm. I was so mad at you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. And do you want to know why I was mad, Jason? This is what really, 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 really pissed me off. The first time I go to the gym with Jen, context here, Jen's been going to the gym, the last two or three years, every single day, seasoned, seasoned, yeah. trained, conditioned. Mm -hmm. I go, we have this exercise, I'll never forget it. You had to put a plate over your head and lunge down this field. I'm bagged doing this with, I think it was the lightest weight possible, and Jen just flies by me with a weight that's like three times mine. Uh -huh. And I'm like, this is my wife. <laughs> or not even at the time, this is my girlfriend at that point in time. She's lucky she's still my girlfriend because I was pretty ticked off at that point. You are, and you felt pretty nasty. Oh, totally. <laughs> and like, that's the hard stuff we went back to it is like the self judgment of like, wow, I'm terrible. My girlfriend lifts more weights than I do. Yeah. <laughs> like, my confidence was at all time low at that point in time. Thanks. I'm going to give Thanks, up Jay. right now. First of all, for the girls listening, hmm. uh, it's not emasculating for girls to be strong too. I'm just, I just I don't disagree. I was just sharing my personal experience where my relative comparison, which is the reason why I was experiencing frustration, because I was comparing myself to anybody. Right. That's the reason why. Like I am, yes. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that yeah. women shouldn't be fit. Do you want to no. know the moments that I hated you in that journey? I'd love to hear them. <laughs> wow, this where, you're in the uh, turn of this conversation. I love it. I love it. Amazing. Where like three weeks in you could lift more than me? Like yeah. Exponential uh, gains of mm -hmm. being a testosterone laden being. man. Yeah. Like I've been working my butt off for years, and I I was not that unhappy <laughs> about the fact that I could outlift you when you came. But literally, you gave me like three weeks, and then that was the end. And that was kind of you know, crush. It, it does it does make my wife furious, um, because. I will put on and lose weight really quickly. Yeah, like, yeah, and and easily. Um, well, Is, no, no, yeah, yeah totally. I will super, totally super easy to put it back on. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> couple sure. pizzas and I'm back. Totally, back to where <laughs> yeah. I was. but like, well, let me just put it like you know, if Anne and I were both 200 pounds and we both started the same diet and the same workout regimen, mm -hmm. I would lose 15 pounds in. A month and sh it would take her three knows she yeah. may not lose 15 pounds right, right. so it, it does infuriate uh, my wife mm -hmm. um, yes but that then is, that is an unfair thing it, totally unfair. even when I look at what Dave and I can reasonably eat when we're training mm -hmm. like, and I'm, I'm training for a half Ironman which relative to the full seems short but it's actually really freaking long race no it's I still scaring me my head yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but when I look at the relative comparisons, even in calories that we can consume, like yeah. Dave sometimes struggles to eat enough. And I'm like, that's, that's all I can, that's all the calories I have in a day. But I'm, I'm training so hard. Yeah. I need to eat more. I'm hungry. Yeah. Like I'm hungry and he's like struggling to put in enough food, which is a little bit unfair too. Totally. <laughs> I can keep, I can, I could never stop eating. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just it's true. Back. Brilliant insight, Aiden. You just, it's true. No, no, no. So, so we, we, we did a short film recently and we, we had GoPros stuck oh, to our you, bodies. You're stealing okay. my thunder. So Go everybody on. had a different GoPro and I had one stuck to my chest here. So lunchtime comes around and usually on film sets, when things are cheap and easy and fast, then we, we order pizzas. And so we're watching and, and you just see the number of slices and the sheer speed at which I can eat a, eat a slice of pizza will shock you. <laughs> we, we were watching the like the condensed version of the day in it like because we we were taking like 30 second pictures or whatever from the GoPros and just we would put up like a little counter and like every couple seconds Adrian was just like ding. 
Really? Oh, it was perfect. a stunning. I, we were, it was by the end, we were just like all slack jawed at the number of pieces of pizza that I was able to I get the sense well, that a food you eating were competition might be in your future. Oh, we were oh, laughing. Oh, I could do it. We were killing ourselves laughing. You were like, <laughs> I, I did not eat this much pizza. And we're like, let's review the tape. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the spirit of. I don't know where I was going to go with that. Things cooking, because I'm cooking here. Oh, you're in the hot seat. I'm in the hot seat. Um, this year, for you guys. Yeah. What are you guys going to be challenging yourselves with? Jason, you mentioned maybe doing another try again. You want to do four, Adrian. But yeah, like, what's, what's the do, big thing that's scary? Do you scary actually guys? want to do four, first of all? Yes, four, four try tries. I just want to keep them small. Like I, I don't want to win. I want it to just be part of my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I don't, want, I don't need to... I don't need to be a winner at the races. I just, I just want to do it all the time. Like, a, and it, it keeps you fit through the oh, yeah. through the season. If you have these these four little markers that yeah. you know you have to train for, mm-hmm. yeah. then it keeps you fit and keeps you healthy. Because I'm, I have this philosophy now at the age of thirty six that if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Mm. And I can feel that already. Like I, I'm like we, at the end of a long week of sport. I can sometimes hobble down the stairs like an old man as my ankles and knees slowly loosen up. So I'm just worried about the longevity of my life in sport because I really enjoy recreational sports a lot. Yeah. Hmm. So with that in mind, it's not to win. It's just to make it part of my life, I suppose. Which That's is, a good goal. Yeah. yeah, it's the best way to think about it, right? Like, yeah. it's one thing to have a, a big goal, do it, and that's the end. Most people who do that with a diet or, an mm-hmm. action or a race or something just within a month or two, go back to exactly where they were before. Yeah. However... I got a hop out, guys. we will be back in a second. <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah. Uh, that's the downfall of uh, training for an Ironman right there, when you run 21 kilometers before you jump in the sauna. You know? Yeah. You can only sweat so much yeah, in the day. Yeah, plumb out of moisture at that point. <laughs> um, but but yeah, all... if it's a lifestyle, if yeah. it's something that you love, that you, you just like training, then yeah. it doesn't really matter. The race is sort of just a fun goal. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and you and you keep you you like keep getting better, but the the truth is that you probably are not going to. I mean, I'm not going to become a professional at this thing. Mm-hmm. But I always say I want to age group when I'm like 80. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna. I just want to last everyone. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And I don't need to age group now. Like yeah. we're in the age group, right? Yeah, yeah. But when I'm 80, you want to be winning. Woo, I'm gonna be taking trophies. <laughs> Get the participation yeah. medal. <laughs> Well, what about creatively? I mean, it sounds like you burn a lot of calories to eat that much pizza on film set. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are you guys working on from a like a film standpoint? Yeah, so we have we have our our, our latest uh, thriller horror called Shifted, great, which has been shot. It's all in the can, and we're going through the editing process right now. Okay. So, we're going to get a first cut done, and we're hoping to release that within the. We're, we're hoping to finish the first cut in the next three months. Okay. And then um, in September, leading up to September, we have a fight night for The Art of Eight Limbs Season 2, which is a Muay Thai documentary series. Yep. And um, so in September is the actual fight night. So about three months before that, we'll be filming all the fighters and getting all the gyms all the and, gyms and B-roll footage and interviews and stuff before that. And what's the name of that series? The Art of Eight Limbs. The Art of... Eight Limbs, which is what... Eight Limbs. limbs. So okay. Muay Thai is like... It's like it's like kickboxing. Right. But it's... Uh, the thing is that they... The difference is that they use knees and elbows primarily. Okay. So you've got eight weapons. You've yes. got hands, your elbows, your knees, and your feet. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's sort of an esoteric name, but we'll probably change it to The Art of Eight Limbs Muay Thai Fights. Gotcha. Yeah. And where can people enjoy that now? Bell 5 Channel 1. Okay, right. right or on. hopefully they can enjoy Season 1 on Bell 5 Channel 1 and hopefully... More to come soon. More, more to come, to come soon. But, but I think shutting me down. Can't shutting you down. Understood. Don't say anything. Don't say anything until, until the paper con- is con- papers are... <laughs> until the to, ink is dry. Back to the horror film. Um, yeah. What is the monster we can look forward to? Jay. <laughs> yeah, Jay's so, face. Jay. Okay. Jay without oh, a shirt. Face, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Yes. Scar- <laughs> scary. There's a reason why we turned the lights down low, uh, so that our we don't we don't lose listeners, we don't lose viewers. Yeah. No, we um, what Jay. is what is the monster? Yeah, the monster doesn't matter. Well, see, the monster doesn't really matter in our movie. Okay, it, it does. We we live we live in a world that has monsters in it at okay. the beginning of the movie. And our film takes place when a bunch of people from outside all converge into a house 
and that they cannot leave because if they step outside, the monsters will get them. Okay. Um, and then what happens through the life of our movie is that one of the people inside the house starts murdering the others. So we have we have a bit of a, uh, a murder on the Orient Express type mm. of thriller, f- murder mystery type film mm-hmm. where people can't leave the house because if they do, um, they'll be eaten. And our, our monsters can... Uh, can detect movement and uh, right. and 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 and, then and they, they are they, they are they are vicious. Do you they know, vicious. unlike you, who loves a good horror movie, ah. Jay, and like just wants to be terrified. I watched Clue. Yes. When I was maybe ten years old, and I did not sleep for a month. Like yeah. cold sweat. Literally, people <laughs> were being murdered by like a can- candlestick falling off a ledge onto yeah. their head. But something about the idea of being trapped in a house. Yeah. And one person. And you don't know who to trust. Totally. Mm-hmm. Got in my head and like destroyed my trust <laughs> in the world, and it was it was profound. Now I, I'm know. a guy. I'm a guy who loves like I re- I remember most of my dreams, and I love nightmares. Now, do you? you I don't, need you one don't, more hour in this barrel to learn about that. <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't like having nightmares. Uh, like it's not something I... Or do, or do you remember your dreams at all? No, I do. I remember yeah. my dreams. I don't love nightmares. I'm not, I'm not like a terrified nightmare person. I have been though mm-hmm. in the past. Like I have some recurring ones as a child that I was very scared at night as a child. Yeah. And I was not, a, I was the kid at birthday parties who everybody would watch like Hellraiser yeah. and I would sit in the corner on the like Atari playing some stupid video game and like, like in my head, la 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 la. Like, I can't hear this. I know this wow. will ruin me. If Clue ruined me. Yeah. Like, yeah. I wasn't ready to level up. Yeah. Amazing. So, um, it was more like... So, we can count on you for one Google Play sale, right? For the movie? Yeah. If you come over and hold my hand, <laughs> tell me it's not Blindfold real. Blindfold you, block your ears, so you don't know what's happening. Let me Put tell you Atari something. in the corner. Everyone, whoever rents our movie on Google Play and puts in a request will really consider coming over to your house and holding your hand while you watch it. Now, wow. would you, would, we, could, we should film Jin while she watches the oh. beginning. Oh my god. Until you can't watch it anymore. Like with my eyes taped open so I can't oh. turn away. Or... Fuck like orange. Oh, okay. I would do this to push my boundaries, but... <laughs> I love it. If I'm terrified for the rest of my life, okay. I, I will... You can counsel Dave on what you've done to his life. Yeah. <laughs> if I can never sleep alone again. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, David. <Dave>. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Wonderful. I cool. will. Pushing boundaries. Yeah. That's what it's all about. So pushing yeah. boundaries. Do you guys feel like your boundaries were pushed today a little bit? Yeah. So I loved this a lot. Yeah. Actually. Completely new awesome. experience. Yeah. Right. This was. Um, I thought I was very afraid, and uh, to be in here as long. Maybe it's the hat. Mm. Um, could be the hat. It could be the hat that I'm wearing. It's got like a very Stalin vibe. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll but get a uh, of it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, from the from the neck up <laughs> is my until I train some more for my next uh, five five k. You're or a beautiful man. You. Yeah. Embrace. 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 I embrace myself. That's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> we embrace daily. Awesome, guys. Well, thanks very much for coming on the Finnish Parliament. Do you guys have a sign-off for your podcast? Or do you have a thing you say? We do. We We do. do. Great. Dream big. Work hard. Yay! That was so fun, guys. That was so fun. Oh, heavens. Good heavens. Now, do you ever sleep in here? No. Overnight? I don't think so. I've always up fallen alive. asleep. When it's not that hot, sometimes we do like a, we call it a low and slow. We get in and then it's long. And uh, it's, it's nappy. Are you supposed to do one with this? You can if you like. Yeah, they get hot. I definitely did not get as hot as in the, the hot seat. Mm. Holy smoke. Oh. For the listeners! Ah! I'm out. I'm out. It's like zero degrees.
thought we were done with all this torture. Oh. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you <thinking> about it? <laughs> I think so. <sighs> it seems like. Like, what are you tripping on me, man? <laughs> this technology. <laughs> now, do we go back in for a second? No. Oh, you And with cold. You end with cold. Woo! End with that cold. That is awesome. That is so cool. Thanks for watching. First frames first. Yes. First frames first. Thank you, Jason. Welcome. If you enjoyed, head over to our website, www.thefableforest.com. Check out our films and sign up for our newsletter where we will send you exclusive content. Hit us up on our socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, always at The Fable Forest. And share our show with your friends. It'll really help us out a lot. Dream big. Work hard.